Hi everyone, you probably noticed I didn't post this vlog last week. That's because this vlog is total diarrhea! But really, I took a break for a week of filming and I was gonna just scrap this footage, but then I was like, no, let's salvage it. So, this is a combination vlog from like two and a half weeks because it would have been miserable and boring if I would have just left in the original footage. And also, I didn't film an intro to this vlog, <laughs> so like, Hi! That's the only time you'll hear me say that. So there's my explanation. Get the footage rolling. Good evening, cat. Cat, I have made the, the pumpkin breads. Have I read tonight? No. Have I made pumpkin bread? Yes. I haven't read anything because I just want to eat pumpkin bread. This is what happens when I live alone. Ma'am. This is a Wendy's drive-thru. So here's the thing. We know I'm currently reading two books. Fantasy, dystopian. I want to read The Handmaid's Tale because I know it'll be easier to read, which means I'm gonna force myself to read this one. Once I get into it, it's fine, but the idea of it sucks, <laughs> which is an over-exaggeration, it's fine. Gosh, I could just be watching the TV show. Why am I reading this? Do you have to read this to read the series? Like for real, for real? These vlogs are becoming increasingly messier and messier because I keep falling asleep. And it happens every single time where I'm like, oh, let me just rest my eyes. Then I wake up at 7 a.m. I got to page 168, so I'm almost done with the story that I was in the middle of. I'm still just kind of bored. Hello, everybody. I'm going home from work right now. Hello. Today was quite uneventful and I'm not gonna lie fam, I brought my book with me to work and then I didn't read it because I knew I was gonna get bored. So I don't know what to do about The Witcher. I don't know if it's like a popular book that people care if I review or not, but after posting my last vlog where I mentioned it, everyone was like, oh my god, The Witcher, so now I feel compelled to review it. So I don't know if that means I should find it on audiobook or what, but I'm just not feeling that book. This runs to the boys of the boom system, top down AC with the cooling system. When you come up in the club, you're blazing up. You got stacks on deck, loose hair, not for you. Be real, you might go to deal. You pop the get the record. What am I doing? Okay, I'm about to drive through downtown, so I'm gonna have a panic attack. I gotta go. Oh my god, they're constructing a giant Christmas tree across from my apartment. Best day of my life. I just got back from the library where I had six books on hold. I know I just said, I don't wanna read any more library books, but I have no excuses. One of them I do have a good excuse for. I got Faker by Sarah Smith, which is a book that I have to review for NetGalley. And as you know, I always request arcs of books, then I wait for them to come out so I can have a physical copy, which is stupid. I need to review them before they come out. But this is an adult romance book about a woman named Emmy. She's one of the only female employees at this construction company. So she always has to like fake it until she makes it because everyone there is like predominantly male and want to talk down to her. But one thing she doesn't fake is how much she hates her co-worker named Tate until they both are forced to work on a charity project together. So it's enemies to lovers. Sounds like it's gonna have some feminist vibes with her overcoming her workplace hostility and like men looking down on her being in that industry. We love to see it! So that's the book that I placed a hold for that I had an excuse to place one for. The rest of these are just for funsies. I'll mention the two that kind of go together that I'll be able to read quickly though. I got some Shel Silverstein books. I used to own these when I was a kid, like baby baby young. And I remember reading them and thinking they were so clever and I have not owned or read them since. So I just wanted to go through these and reread them. If you're unfamiliar, they are humorous poems wildly popular so much fun to read probably gonna be really nostalgic and then i got three books that i may or may not read but i really am interested in them the first one is the astonishing color of after by emily xr pan everyone loves this book it's like a most loved contemporary on booktube i would say all i know is that it's about depression i think the main character's mother commits suicide and so it's about the after effects of that so she goes to taiwan to meet her maternal grandparents for the first time so it's kind of like a coping with loss 
getting to know her culture more sounds beautiful. This is blurbed by everyone under the sun, so I don't know why I haven't read this sooner. And then I got two adult books that I've been having an eye on. First, On Earth, We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Byung, but this book's first line of the synopsis gives me chills and I have no idea what else it's about other than the first line, but just listen to this. This book is a letter from a son to a mother who cannot read. So it says it's an exploration of race, class, displacement, just so many themes come up in this and it sounds so interesting I want to read it and then lastly I got a weird book I got the Pisces by Melissa Broden this was shortlisted I think for the women's fiction prize and all I know about this book is that it's extremely sex heavy and I think she's having sex with a fish the tagline for the book is an uproariously funny gloriously strange fiercely original tale of love sex and a merman I just I'm interested so I got it I got gas I got groceries. Hello, hello. Oh, I have low tire pressure. I'm in a good mood today. I did good. So I'm gonna go home, make some asparagus. Hope there's no one behind me when I pull out of here. And I'm just gonna have a good night. Like I was in a bad mood earlier because I'm not enjoying my book, but like, who cares? Let's do it. Oh, I see that Christmas tree. It's gonna look so good. Christmas pictures in front of that tree are upcoming. <laughs> Witty novels. When you and Bay go on a Best Buy date? Yes. Yes, it's in the middle of a work day. Yes, it's I'm at Best Buy. Are you looking at yourself? I'm yeah. Oh. <laughs> I was posing and it's not even facing me. Hello. Time to go home from work. Wait, wait, wait. Goodbye. I did this decor and my boss doesn't like it, but it's Stranger Things themed and I thought I was being cute. Please give me validation that you liked my Stranger Things idea. I like anything you do. <laughs> it's really loud, but I decided to make some dinner, a turkey burger while it's cooking. I'm gonna start some poetry. <laughs> and already it's so cute and fun. Change of plans for the night. Found out my friends or coworkers are out to eat together and I left work too early to hear about the plans. So I'm gonna go meet them at the restaurant and go hang out even though I already had dinner because I want to make friends. If I have to parallel park at this restaurant, I'm gonna lose my marbles. I'm out in public. What? Just insisted on being in it. <laughs> You're gonna be in more of my vlogs than I am. <laughs> I'm totally fine with that. Hi, Sierra. Love you. <laughs> I still have makeup and lipstick on my face, but we're gonna deal with it. So I just want to mention, like, I'm proud of myself for coming home from work, getting comfy, making dinner, starting a book, and then I get a call from my coworker, like, "Hey, we're all hanging out. Do you want to come?" And I drove half an hour to go be with them and hung out until like 11 p.m. I never have categorized myself as someone who's spontaneous. And maybe that definition is a little bit silly to people who can fully embrace that. But for me, I'm very much like a flaky person. Even if I have confirmed plans, I will often not want to go to them. So something I've been being more diligent with is I want to start showing up to things. I don't want to come home from work every day and sit with my cats and read and then YouTube and then that's it. I and mean, I know just going out to dinner is like a small step. I want to go to stuff and I want to stop being like, I don't want to. Because I was crying laughing tonight. We had a brownie with ice cream. Like I would have just sat around and probably fallen asleep at 9 p.m. if I hadn't gone. So I'll get better at vlogging whenever I do those things but I just wanted to voice that I'm like happy with myself for doing that because that would have been unheard of even as soon as like three months ago when I was having anxiety hanging out with my friends because I rarely left the house like that was something that happened to me this year I really haven't like recapped my year after getting a job we all know before I got the job <laughs> I was miserable, but I got to a place where I would leave my house so infrequently, or at least to hang out with people. I would get anxious going to meet my friend for Froyo. The growth from then to now, we love it. We love to see it. I really got to go to bed soon, but I'm gonna give myself like 
15 minutes of spare time before bed. I'm gonna continue reading my fun poetry book. I need a break from my constant negativity about reading The Last Wish, but I'm just taking the nostalgic route. I'm rereading some of this poetry. Everything is bringing back memories. I'm already 37 pages into this, just reading it as I made dinner and ate dinner. So as soon as I finish that, I also wanna read Where the Sidewalk Ends. I think this is gonna be the one I'm more familiar with. And I have some sweet potato chips to eat while I do that. I'm sure I won't finish either of these, but I'm just gonna have a relaxing night in and be a kid. chill day. Didn't get any reading done whatsoever though. I have this vision of me sitting in my comfy chair and reading for hours on end every night, but instead I'm now using it as a laundry chair because I don't have one in my bedroom. So while this pumpkin bread is in the oven, I'm going to wash my dishes, take my trash out. Sorry, this is a boring clip, but y'all, sometimes adulting means you can't read the books you wanna read on the days you wanna read them. We got a weekend coming up. And I'm not gonna read on the weekend either because I made plans, but I'm making pumpkin bread for my coworkers, so I'm a philanthropist. I was cleaning for two hours and only cleaned my kitchen and I'm cranky and tired, but I'm gonna read some fun stuff before I go to bed. I look like a toad in this angle. We're leaving it. And I literally didn't read a page all day, so I'm gonna get something done before midnight so I can say that I read on this fine, Thursday evening. Hi, I didn't vlog literally a single second this weekend. So to make up for it, I'm gonna sing Billie Eilish's new song that I'll probably get copyrighted for. I had a dream. He's singing too. I had a dream. I got everything I wanted. Not what you think. And if I'm being honest, it might have been a nightmare To anyone who might care I thought I could fly So I stepped off the golden mm, Nobody cried Nobody even noticed I saw them standing right there Kinda thought they might care I had a dream I thought everything I wanted But when I wake up I see You with me And you say As long as I'm here No one can hurt you If I could change the way that you see yourself You wouldn't wonder why you're here They don't deserve you When you have an all staff meeting the month of Thanksgiving So they give you a Thanksgiving dinner Oh my god, I feel bad. I'm eating both the regular and the vegan Because <laughs> I'm hungry I got a cupcake I can eat <laughs> Oh my god, why do I look like this? I was gonna record be like, oh my god, it's been so long since we've talked, but I look like this. Yeah, we're not doing this. This is why I want to do a podcast. I look like Boo Boo the Clown. Hi. So I gave myself a week off from filming, mostly just because I was in a reading slump. But during that time, I finished a couple books. I finished both my Neil Schusterman poetry books. This bitch said Neil Schusterman. And even these were kind of difficult to read because I'm just not in the mood to delve into stuff, or at least I wasn't. 
past tense. But I gave myself a week to get back into the vibe, <laughs> to pass the vibe check. Today is Sunday. I don't know if I'm gonna continue to vlog for another week and then post like a three week reading vlog or what. But I'm thinking about doing vlogmas again just because I haven't been loving my content and I think it's because I'm out of shape like vlogging wise. <laughs> so I've been spending the morning reading. It's kind of a sick day for me. I don't feel that good. So I finished this poetry book and then I just told myself to get further into The Last Wish. So I've been reading this book now for like a month and it's not bad, but the way that it is as individual short stories is I care about some of them and I don't care about some of them. And I finally have reached the story that's like the title story called The Last Wish and it's introducing, I don't know if she's the love interest, but Yennefer, who's the entire book they've been like mentioning her in sideways glances like, ugh. Yennefer's looking for you. Now we're getting to the part where they meet one another for the first time and so it's like I get to learn the backstory of that and it's getting interesting and then that story is basically the last story in this collection. But this book is just not that interesting. I'm gonna push through. I like Geralt. I just finished The Witcher. It was all right. Because it's short stories, there's no beginning, middle, end to anything. I didn't really even get a sense of who the important characters are that we'll revisit. I probably couldn't even tell you what happened to the first half of this book because it took me so long to read. Also, before you get to book one, there's another book of short stories. So now I'm even less motivated to read them. I don't know. I like Geralt. But some of these stories are interesting. Some of them aren't. I'm sure it'll be fun fun in a movie format, but this is just written in a very like male fantasy way and it focuses on plot and writing rather than characters, whereas I just wish this focused more on the characters and their feelings, but men don't want to write about feelings, so it just felt very dry. And that's the tea. So, fun story. Gordo. Not the time. In the middle of reading all the books that I was reading, I was kind of bored. So I started this book from the library. So I started the Pisces, which I explained earlier. And so far, this is about a woman whose boyfriend breaks up with her. And so she is very mentally unstable about it. Really revengeful and petty and doesn't deal with her emotions well. <laughs> so she's been getting in trouble with the police because she's kind of obsessed with getting her boyfriend back. And her sister, who is going away for the summer, suggests that she goes and moves into her apartment in like California for the summer to get away. And then I haven't gotten to this part yet, but mermaids. <laughs> I like this book so far because it is very crass. It's just a woman who does not give a fuck what people think of her and like how terrible she is. She just says what's on her mind, even if it's clearly not morally right. The writing of this book is also stunning. It delves into depression and kind of like the ennui of living. <laughs> so I'm only on page... <laughs> 30 and it's already super deep and I feel like I have a good grasp of the character and this book is so quick so I want to read this next because I'm already like how many pages are there like 300 yeah there's barely even 250 pages so I'm really enjoying this and I think this is going to be a good pick me up and I also need to read this romance book for review so I think these two back to back are going to be really easy and fun so I'm finally picking myself back up from the weeks that it took me to read that witcher book I feel like Krusty McCrusterson right now, so I don't want to do an update until after I shower, but I'm forcing myself to because I need to tell you about the book I finished. If this were any other book, I would be so hyped to get on here and talk about it, but I don't know what to say. I enjoyed it. It's probably going to get like a four stars for me, but it's one of those books where it requires brain cells. <laughs> like the main character does all this crazy wacky stuff and it turns into like fantasy and she has questionable morals. And yeah, I kind of read it for surface level things because I read it so quickly and it was just so funny and easy to digest on a literal scale. But also if I would have read this with a book club or a group, I think it would have been a lot of fun. There's a lot going on here about handling depression, especially in the wake of losing a loved one. I mean like losing a relationship, not someone died. There's a lot about how that affects the people around you when you make selfish decisions and being addicted to wanting to be loved. There's so much that goes into this. Like there's 
20 different angles I could talk about, but I thought it was fascinating. You have to be the type of person to be able to suspend your disbelief for there to be a fantasy element in an otherwise realistic world. But I don't know, I just like the journey this book took me on. The character suffered consequences for her actions. She came out of the book with a different perspective than she went into it with. So I just think it was clever, weird. Just in general, for me to read a book in one sitting, it's pretty high praise. So again, I think I'm gonna give this four stars. And I have a lot to do tonight. I'm currently in the middle of making dinner. My apartment is filthy. I still have to shower, but I wanted to go ahead and start Queen of Nothing. Okay, here's the thing. The Queen of Nothing? I've been calling it Queen of Nothing for like a year. Someone here slipped that in and didn't tell me. So I just read this a little bit before I started dinner. So I'm on page 50. So far, so good. If you don't know, this is the third book in the Cruel Prince series. Everyone and their mother has been tweeting about it and spoiling it. I feel like I'm just performing in this vlog clip. I'm just like, I like reading. I started this book. I'm not in the mood to film. My tummy hurts. I'm leaving now. <laughs> Just crying while eating green beans. Cause I spent so long making dinner and I did it wrong. <laughs> and I don't feel good. My apartment is so messy. This is why I haven't vlogged for a week. I'm crying cause my potatoes undercooked. Am I going downhill? Is this what this is? I'm just too tired to even give a fuck. Surprise, I'm done having a meltdown. Moral of the story, I don't know how to cook. I calmed down about it, I got in the shower, I cleaned. It's past when I usually go to bed, but I need to relax and read. So I'm currently on page 66 of Queen of Nothing. Good. I'm just like, oh my god, what's gonna happen next? And I'm avoiding reading it because I'm stressed. I'm still feeling really weird and I kind of want to not go to work tomorrow. I'm gonna worry about it when I have to worry about it and let's just fucking read, sis. Hello vlog. Winter is the suckiest vlog season because by the time you get home from work, it's already dark outside. Like, hello. I'll feed you dinner in a sec. Anyway, today I didn't get the opportunity to read at lunch because we were talking about Star Wars. Gordo. I don't know if I updated this number, but I made it to page 99. So I'm really enjoying this. Last night when I was reading, I got to a part where there was a <clears throat> confrontation. And so because there was so much angst, I was avoiding reading this because the like secondhand embarrassment, but also like the build up to that moment was so great and it was worth it. <laughs> but I also got some mail. So this is a package from Cody. I will link her channel down below. My hero, love her. I put out a request on Twitter for this book in particular. Oh, I just saw it. Ah! Y'all are like, huh? You already own four copies of that book. But here's the thing, I don't own this version. So this is the Fairy Loot edition. Fairy Loot has been killing it. By the way, not sponsored, not promo, literally nothing. They did not tell me to say this. Fairy Loot has been killing it with their book selections because for the past like four or five boxes, they've all been books that I highly enjoyed. And I really, really wish that I'd done a subscription so I could get these, like this one and Serpent and Dove. I can't even remember the previous ones, but they're all books that I love. So I purchased a subscription to Fairy Loot because I want these pretty editions. So if you do not know anything about this book, it is one of my favorites, if not my number one favorite of the year. It follows a young librarian who is the keeper of these magical tomes. She's been told all her life that sorcerers are bad and corrupt and they'll take advantage of you. So she's learned to fear them until one day this sorcerer comes to her library to use one of their books and she ends up getting framed or dragged into this scandal that happens so she has to go back to the city with the sorcerer she's been trained not to trust him but she has to learn more about him there end up being really nefarious things happening in the city so she has to help the sorcerer do you mind this is a wendy's drive through that was a terrible synopsis based on other synopses i've given in different vlogs but this book is beautiful. The main character is tall. The love interest is bisexual. It is so well written. There's so much action. There's so much angst. There's the most perfect, cute, sassy little side character that's a demon. And I have no complaints about this book. Not a single one. So highly, highly, highly recommend, which is why I'm building my collection. And thank you, Cody, for helping contribute to that. Cool. So I'm still not feeling a hundred percent. I'm going to make some dinner and take it easy and read. And apparently feed these little gremlins because they're so noisy and cranky. Oh, you good boy. Logging at the photo shoot would be like, 
You're so cool! Invented I being cool! Hello, Invented Beauty, Invented Sunsets, Invented Train Tracks, Invented Shoes, Invented Black Skinny <laughs> Jeans, Invented Hats. Oh my god, I want to read that so bad. Hello, group chat from work. Goodbye. What's it about? Can you give a better synopsis than me? No, I have no idea what it's about except lesbians and um, fantasy. Fucking mint. I had my camera in my backpack the entire time we were hanging out at dinner, so I don't know why I vlogged on my phone, but I'm home now. But at work, I got a couple more chapters into The Queen of Nothing. I literally got so addicted to it reading at lunchtime that when I went back from lunch and I was waiting for my computer to load, like between pages loading, I would read like half a page. It wasn't a good system, but it got so I could read more. So now I'm on page 140. Stuff is happening. Cardin is in the book, which is all that I wanted. I feel like I should have done a dedicated vlog for this book because I know people would want to hear my extended thoughts and at this point in the series staying spoiler free is difficult but I like the book the family vibes in this book are surprising me I like the writing style I'm adding tabs to it which by the way if you're gonna ask that the colors don't mean anything I just like alternating them so it's rainbow hello everybody good morning everyone I for sure fell asleep last night while reading I have to leave for work in like 10 minutes so before I do that I just wanted to update you I got to page 176 so I'm like halfway through and it's getting good my problem is I can see this ending soon but there's still half a book left so I'm like oh god and I have no predictions for what's gonna happen and I really haven't seen that many reactions to the ending of it so I don't know if it's happy or sad but one criticism I have seen is Cardin's too soft in this book. He's different. He's been like a hard nut to crack in the previous books. We needed some kind of give because if he was going to continue being like as closed off as he was, we weren't going to get anywhere. Ha ma ma. So I'm liking it. There's lots of quotes that I'm tabbing because it's very angsty. Also, I'm going to a concert tonight. I'm going to see the 1975. So this is going to be so fun. Get down with your body. 
Good morning everyone, I am rushing to do my makeup because I told my mom I'd be at the house at 8 a.m. to watch the parade and I have half an hour to drive there and it's currently 40 minutes, but it's gonna be fine. So last night I saw the 1975. It was so good. I wish I'd done a little bit more research before going because they played a lot of their first album that I haven't listened to that much. And it wasn't like, oh, I know the chorus. It was like, I legit, everyone was screaming when it came on. I was like, I don't know what song this is. But they played all the bangers. They didn't play Loving Someone or If I Believe You, which are my favorites from the second album. But they did a really, really cool talk about climate change before Love It If We Made It. Like, overall, was it worth the $70 or $100 ticket I paid for it? Not really. Like, I don't think I would go back and see them, even though they're coming back this spring. Unless I learned some of their older music, which I just frankly don't love. If they just played a concert that was their entire second album and like Chocolate Sex and Falling For You, then I'd be good. But yeah, that's my two cents on the 1975. It was fun. Now I'm like rush applying mascara so I can go get some turkey. But Queen of Nothing update as well. I was reading it during work yesterday. That was a mistake. It was really, really slow and my computer was really, really slow. So I was reading, like I had the book open on my desk while I was working. I got to some scenes. That's what we're gonna say about that. I think this is my favorite one in the series because finally the characters have their guard down, which I know I mentioned earlier. So we actually get some action, like hello. I'm on page like 220, so I've got maybe like an hour left of reading. I'm sure I'm gonna do it today while I wait for the turkey. Yeah, this is probably gonna get 4.5 stars unless the ending is just super cringy and predictable, which my best friend Bonnie read it and she was like, <laughs> I knew what was gonna happen as soon as this one plot point happened and I was like, gee, okay. Other than the stain on my shirt that I tried to blot out with water, I think we're done. Time to go drive half an hour to my parents' house. Oh, lipstick. Time to go drive half an hour to my parents' house. Good heckin' evening, my pals. I am so full of Thanksgiving. I'm honestly sweating and I'm just laying here. But, good news of the night, I finished my book. I think I'm gonna give this book four and a half stars. The ending of it was so anticlimactic because the problems that they face in this book are just kind of like one-step solutions. So like the book is 300 pages and that's it. So there's really only like one main conflict and then they solve it within like two pages. And there's really no risks that were taken. But it just wasn't that exciting. I wasn't that gripped. I mean, character wise, yeah, but plot wise, this could have done a lot more. I started this book, Faker. I have this book on Kindle and as a library book, depending on my mood. But this is a romance book. I've explained it earlier in this vlog. And I'm on page too. But little did I just find out, the main character is a copywriter and that's like my dream job. So I'm hoping I'm gonna love this just cause me and the character are on the same playing field. What are you doing, my mom? Is that a good spot to lay? I'm sweaty and disgusted and didn't take off my makeup last night, but bright and early in the morning, I don't have work today. So my coworker Kristen coerced me into having Friendsgiving today than going to her school's football game. It is dreary and misty and nasty outside, so I'm hoping I can convince them not to go to the game. I made it to page 26, and it's good, it's fun, it's well written, but it's mirroring my life very closely in almost a frightening way. There are a lot of elements in this book that I can relate to with my current job, so I'm just like, oh God, oh no. So it's been interesting, but I'm on page 26, and my muffins are ready. I don't foresee reading a ton of it today because football game, Friendsgiving, but it's good so far. I would sit here and read it all day if I could, but I agreed to be a good person and go hang out with my friends. Makeup on apartment, cleaned pumpkin bread. <gasps> That's such cute lipstick. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw that. <laughs> what are we doing, Kristen? We're going to Friendsgiving. And then a football game. And then a football game, cause TCU. Go from <laughs> yeah. It's 
raining. I'm kind of miserable. But it's amazing. <laughs> we got ice cream. Mm -hmm. And Ryan's over there. <laughs> and then I have a pair of prescription sunglasses that I don't ever wear. What? Hello. <laughs> Let it go. I am one with the wind and sky. Let it go. Let it go. Hello. I am the worst vlogger. Today has been a day full of my mom and I decorating my apartment. So I have a lot of updates on that, but I think I want to show you when it's daytime and not when it's nighttime. So I didn't do a ton of reading, but I did do some. Like y'all know, I made my way through Faker by Sarah Smith. So I'm currently 88 pages into this. There's like 300, so it's maybe like a third of the way. Here's my thoughts. When I first started this book, I was like, that's crazy. It's so similar to my life. Well, now that I'm several chapters into it, it's literally my life. Her situation at her job and the role that she fills and the way she interacts with her coworkers and like the way that her job makes her feel, I'm like, oh my God, it me. So other than like having a hot romance with her coworker, like this book just understands me. Yeah, I'm liking it. I think it's gonna be like a 3.5 stars. <sighs> Basically it's enemies to lovers, but the characters are already like getting over it. And for me, I want like the drawn out angst. I want there to be situations where they're forced together and they have to to talk things out and understand their differences, but already they've kissed with like no build up. So the pacing of it isn't the best enemies to lovers, but the writing style is fun. Again, I like the plot situation, the workplace shenanigans. For a long time, I wasn't able to read books that were so heavily focused on work just because they weren't fun to read. <laughs> and I couldn't relate, but now it's the polar opposite. Let's get comfy. We comfy. <laughs> I've got a Scentsy going back there that's gingerbread. It's not flavored, what is it? Scented? We are truly living our best lives, my gals. Hello, I forgot to film an outro, but my cats are being so cute, so I'm just gonna show it to them. Hi, baby, she's so happy and sleepy. So Vlogmas starts December 1st. It's December 1st, which means this vlog must come to an end. Hope you enjoyed. I will see you next time. Bye, friends.